Make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands. Sing forth the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Praise the Lord to everybody this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. and We all shall rejoice and be glad in it in Jesus' name. Truly, God has once again smiled on us. He has been so, so good to each and every one of us. He has allowed us to see a brand new week that we went through on last week. And here we are to begin another week. And we are so thankful for we're so glad that we're still here in the land of the living in jesus name it could have been another way but god saw forth for us to be here this morning we came to give him the glory the honor which is due unto him in jesus name but truly he is worthy of all the praise the bible tells us from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same he is worthy to be praised in jesus name to him be glory majesty dominion and power we give honor this morning to him. We give honor to our pastor, Elder Fred Martin Jr., to our first lady, uh, Sharon Martin, in Jesus' name, to all of our mothers in the absence, in Jesus' name, to Elder Jefferson, Lady Jefferson, to all the men and women of God that is here, those that are in the place this morning, those on the way, and those that will be joining us on Facebook, in Jesus' name. We are glad, we are glad to be here this morning. We can say like the Psalms that say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. How many glad to be here this morning? Amen. amen, amen, amen. Nobody was forced. Nobody had the arm twist. They came on their own free will in Jesus' name. You're here this morning. You're here. You need to sing and give God the praise which is doing. You need to lift up his holy name in Jesus' name. But this time, we're going to call to worship. I'm going to worship, and we ask everyone that can stand to stand as we call to worship in Jesus' name. We will have our opening selection in Jesus' name. Let's all sing and clap along.
give God some praise this morning. This is the way we praise him. Hallelujah. We lift our voice. We sing and we clap our hands. We give God the glory for the wonderful things he has done. For truly he deserves it all in Jesus' name. We thank God for that open selection this morning. And as we prepare to go before the Lord in prayer, we ask you to keep yourself in a prayerful state at all times. The Bible says men ought to always pray and not to faint in Jesus' name. That we should always, always be approaching the throne of grace. God. We all need God's mercy. We all need God's kindness. We all need his goodness in the land in which we live in Jesus' name. Because we see a lot of things going on, a lot of things happening. But God keeps us in Jesus' name. As we travel over the highways, danger seen and unseen. Amen. As we go to our job, as we go to our the stores, the department stores, mm -hmm. as we go to different places, God always watching over his people. Not just his people, but for the ones that you take the time to pray for. The one that you Amen. just say, Lord, have mercy on such and such. Look down on them. They may not Amen. quite understand, but Lord, cover them under your precious blood in Jesus' name. Pray one for another that God will continue to have his way in each and every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Pray for everyone that is about to join us on Facebook that God will give them a word that is in due season in Jesus' name. We have a list of names and families that are on our prayer list here. Pray for Mr. Joshua Kemp and family. Pray for Brother George Nicholson, Angela Tabron, LaShonda Martin King, Shandrea Mason, Jonathan Pilgrim, Katrina Mitchell, Travis Williams and family, the Taylor family, Laurie Ann Boone, Alexius Nicholson, Camry Gumbry, Bishop Maurice and First Lady Deborah Carter, Dewan Anderson, Jerome Davis, Chandretta Whitaker, Gerald Power, Denise Johnson, pray for the victims of the Surfside of the uh, hotel that fell there collapsed in Florida. Pray for the peace of Israel in Jesus' name. We have our senior name here. Remember them as we also approach the throne of grace. Mother Mamie Martin, Mother Margaret Nicholson, Brother Ernest and Mother Mary Tabern in Jesus' name. Mother Helena Coley, Ella and Mother, Mother Woodley, and Brother and Mother Richardson in Jesus' name. These are the names in, that we have here on our prayer list that request our prayer. Continue to... Ask God to watch over them, to keep them. Those that know him, keep them with their mind stayed upon him. For he said if we do, he will keep us in perfect peace. Pray for those that are going through their different situations. One is awaiting a kidney. Some are seeking job opportunities. And some just 14 years old, Jonathan Pilgrim, 14 months old with cancer in Jesus' name. Pray that God will continue to have his way. Because we look back over our lives. We could, that could have been some of us. That probably should have been some of us. But God has smiled on me. He has set me free in Jesus' name. Pray in Jesus' name as we have our prayer song and we go before the throne of grace. Hallelujah. At this time, let every heart pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, this morning with humble hearts. And 
thanking you for another day that you have allowed us to see, thanking you for just this chance and this opportunity that you have given us to come before your throne of grace this morning, Lord. Lord, we're here this morning because of your sure mercy. Lord, we're here because you thought enough of us this morning to wake us up, to get us started on our way. You gave us the activities of our limbs that we are able to move this morning. You kept us as we slumber and slept over the night, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord. Danger may it have been all around us, but Lord, you protected us, you kept us, and we're here this morning to say, Lord, we thank you. We praise you, and we glorify you right now. We come upon your name, for your name is a strong tower, and we know that the righteous run into it, and it's safe this morning, Lord. So Lord, right now, as your people lift up their voice unto you right now, Lord, as we bring our cares to you, Lord, as we bring Lord, our situation, Lord, some may be good, some may be bad, Lord. Some we may even be ashamed to approach your throne of grace about this morning, Lord. But, Lord, we come this morning boldly to the throne of grace, knowing that we need your help, Lord. We need you in the time in which we live, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord. For we all have sinned and come short of your glory, Lord. But because, Lord, you are God, you sit high, Lord. Lord, you died, you rose again the third day that we may have life this morning, that we may have this life more abundantly. So, Lord, we come to you, Lord, this morning. Say, Lord, have mercy upon us right now, Lord. Stretch forth your mighty hand and touch your people right now. Everyone that is in this place right now, that is under the sound of my voice, Lord, you know what we have need of, Lord, before we even ask about it. But your word said, ask and it shall be given. Your word said, seek and it shall be found. Your word said, knock and it shall be opened right now. So, Lord, we're seeking, Lord. We're asking, and we're knocking at the door right now, saying, Lord, look on us right now, Lord. Give us this day our daily bread, Lord. Help us to keep our hearts and our minds stayed upon you. Help us to do those things that are pleasing before you right now, Lord. Every name that was called out on our prayer list, Lord, go to their server places right now, wherever they may be, Lord. If they're our Lord tuning in with us this morning, touch them right now from the sound of their head to the sole of their feet. Every name that was called out, Lord, visit them right now, Lord. Give them a special touch this morning, Lord. Let them know that the people of God is praying for them right now, Lord. But Lord, why we are praying, Lord, give them a mind right now, Lord. Give them that mind right now, Lord. Break the stony hearts right now, Lord. Give your people a heart of flesh that they may call upon your name right now. Look on, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord. Lord, our leaders, Lord, in our land right now, Lord, continue to have mercy upon them. Bless them, Lord, that they may, Lord, make the right choices, Lord, the right decisions, Lord. Lord, help them, Lord, to pass the right laws, the right bills, Lord. Lead them and guide them right now, Lord. Look on, Lord, in Jesus' name, our elderly, Lord. The senior names that we called out here at this local congregation, Lord. But, Lord, not just here, Lord. We know that you are a mighty God. You are omnipresent, God. You are omnipotent, God. You are omniscient right now, Lord. Have your way all over your land right now, Lord. Bless right now, Lord. Look on those that are called Calling on you out of a pure heart this morning, Lord. Lord, give some out of mind right now, Lord, to want to repent of their sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins, Lord. And we know you're able, Lord. We know you're just, and we know that you're kind. For your word said that you're not willing that any should perish, but that all shall come to repentance, Lord. We ask you right now, Lord, to look on the sick to shut in right now. Lord, look on, Lord, every man and woman of God that is preparing to bring forth your word, Lord. Feed us, Lord, with manna from on high, and we'll give you the glory. We'll give you the honor. We'll give you the praise, for it all belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all in Jesus' name. We thank God for the prayer and the prayer song that went up before the Lord. At this time, we'll go through our scripture readings. You can remain standing, those in Jesus' name that can. This morning, our scripture reading will come from Psalms 
67. Psalm 67. Psalm 67. And we will read the entire song. It has seven verses in it. Those of you who have your Bible, you find it with us. And those that don't, you can follow along with us on our monitors in Jesus' name. Psalm 67, we'll read it responsibly, beginning with verse 1. And it reads, God be merciful unto us, and bless us, and cause his face to shine upon us. Selah. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Verse 7 all together. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Amen. Amen. You may be seated at this time in Jesus' name. We thank God for the reading of Psalm 67 in Jesus' name. At this time, we're going to go to our uh, greetings and announcements in Jesus' name, and they will be by First Lady Sharon Martin. Let's greet her with a hearty amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. God is great, and he is so greatly to be praised. Let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire. One. We are so grateful for everything that he has supplied unto us, all of our needs, according to his riches and glory. Please remember the order of our services. They are in your program. Amen. Our Sunday mornings are Sunday mornings at 7 a.m. Our Bible class are Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. via our Zoom and conference call. And our Sunday school is Thursday nights at 7 p.m. via conference call. Our Holy Communion is held each first Sunday following our morning worship service. We praise the Lord for last Sunday, how we had a day of celebration, how God truly met us here at refuge. Amen. We just praise the Lord for just being so good to us, and we worship him today, not only today, but every day, that he allows us to see, that he allows breath to be in we give him praise and honor. Um, we want to let you know that the table in the got a new number. I will post it on the bulletin board for you all. But anyone who has a pen this morning, I'll give it to you now. day wisely and slow they stumble that runs fast amen we have to take it slow wait upon the Lord just wait on, upon him and his guidance and let him lead us in Jesus name I was in the service into the hands of minister Nicholson let's receive him with a hearty week to align yourself with the enemy. You can make some of the announcements of our Bible class and our Sunday school in Jesus' name. Make it your purpose to do so in Jesus' name. We thank God. The sister um, <coughs> Sharon has said um, we had a beautiful day on last Sunday in Jesus' name. I remember uh, telling uh, uh, 
Sister Angela and Mother Martin that were walking out the door last Sunday. I said, it's been a long time, but I said, Mother Martin, you was, uh, you was, uh, you came to church in the morning and you stayed all day. I said, it's been a long time since you've been there that morning. Came to church in the morning and we stayed all day long with Jesus. And we truly enjoyed ourselves and it, and, and we haven't done that in a while and, and you didn't know, didn't know how much energy it takes to do that when you haven't done it in a while. You had to, you had to, you had to go back and, and dig again and say, wait a minute, now let's, let's, let's rethink this. Let's look at this again or prepare yourself a little bit better than do that. Maybe wear some more comfortable shoes or something. But God was good. We all enjoyed ourselves and we thank God that you come in now. You can see the brand new drive that you drive down each and every Sunday morning and each time you come into this sanctuary in Jesus' name. God is good and we thank God for the tabrings in Jesus' name, and we have another announcement about the tabrings at the end of our morning worship this morning that we will share with you in Jesus' name. Just pray that God will have his way. Continue to pray for our pastor in Jesus' name. He's having a few technical difficulties this morning in Jesus' name, but if, you, if we keep, some of you know that that's up in age, you know, some days are better than others, but God still is good all the time in Jesus' name. Pray for him that God will give him the strength that he need in yeah. Jesus' name. How many believe God can do anything? I know. I believe God can do anything. The only way God will fail because you think he failed. But he won't fail. You may thank the Lord you had let me down this time. But God, he can't fail. He can't fail. All the time he will fail in your life and when you think he has failed you. But God will always be on time. He allows some things to be just to show you how good, how great, and how strong and mighty he is. That's the kind of God that we serve in Jesus' name. Pray for our pastor in Jesus' name. We're going to go and take our offering in Jesus' name. And as he like to say so often, don't, 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 don't change your praise. Don't, don't change your attitude about it. Just, just still keep, keep on giving God what is due unto him in Jesus' name. For everything, he said, the house is mine, the land is mine, the child is mine. Everything to sit upon, everything that you can see, even you, whether you think so or not, you belong to God in Jesus' name. So get your offering, your tithe and your office together that we can bring it in Jesus' name, that we may give God the glory for all the things that he has done for each and every one of us. He has blessed us, he has kept us in the land of the living in Jesus' name. Could have been, as I said, another way, but God has smiled upon us in Jesus' name. As you hopefully had gotten your Give it together. Stand on your feet in Jesus' name. Let us pray at this time. Eternal God, once again, we come to you saying, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the many, many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for how you have given us the ability to go out and earn wealth, that we may be able to do the things that we desire to do. But most important, Lord, that we may remember you in all our doing. For you said in all our ways that we acknowledge you, that you would direct our path. So, Lord, right now, as your people prepare to bring their gifts unto thee right now, Lord, bless those that have to give. Bless those, Lord, that may not have anything to give. But, Lord, just give them the mind, the spirit, and the thought. Just as that, Lord, I don't have anything to give, but I'm going to walk around this table and touch this table that the next time, I will have such to give unto you. For, Lord, truly, you are merciful, you are kind. Bless us right now. Bless every gift that has been given. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us come at this time.
Lord, for he is good and he is worthy of all the praise in Jesus' name. Once again, we like to say good morning and praise the Lord to everybody in Jesus' name. For those here and those that are joining us live on Facebook, we welcome you in Jesus' name to Red Fruit Church Morning Worship in Jesus' name. We give all the glory and all the honor unto our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is King of kings, who is Lord of lords, the one that woke you and I up this morning, the one that kept us in our right minds in Jesus' name as we went through our days in Jesus' name. To him be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. We thank God this morning for you joining us and for what the Lord is about to do in each and every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Truly, he has been good. He's been more than good in Jesus' name. So as we prepare to bring forth the word of God this morning, we just ask you to just get your heart and your minds in Jesus' name. Open up your ears this morning. Open up your thoughts in Jesus' name. Open up the things that are that seems to hinder you about anything about the all weight and all sin that easily besets you. Just lay them to the side right now. Lay them to the side. Don't worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. Don't worry about what's going to happen later on this afternoon. Just put your mind on God right now. For he said that if we keep our minds stayed upon him, he will keep us in perfect peace in Jesus' name. So if you do, if we do our part, God is faithful and he will do just what his word said he would do in Jesus' name. So this morning, as we move right along into the word of God, we ask you to turn with us to Joshua chapter 2. Joshua chapter 2, and we will begin our reading at verse 12, and we will read down to verse 19. Joshua chapter 2, verses 12 through 19. And as you find it, you here in the congregation this morning, you can see us if you are able to. And for those that are joining us on Facebook, it would be delightful if you would stand also in reverence of the word of God, even if you're in your own home, except if you're driving and you're listening in. Now you can, maybe you want to pull on side of the road and just get out and open your door and just stand on the side of the road as the word of God has been read in Jesus' name. Joshua chapter 2, verses 12 through 19. If you have it, say amen. 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 If you, and once again, if you're here in the congregation, here in the building, you can read it on our monitors to my left and right if you don't have your Bible with you. But it reads, Joshua chapter 2, verses 12 through 19 says, Now therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. And that you will save alive my father and my mother and my brother and my sister and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. And the men answered her, our life for yours. If ye utter not this our business, and it shall be when the Lord has given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with you. Then she let down, then she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. And it, and she said unto them, Get you to the mountain. Least a pursuer meet you and hide yourself three days. There are three days until the pursuer be returned, and afterward may ye go your way. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of thine oath, which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread. In the window, which thou didst let us down by, and thou shalt bring thy father, and thy mother, and thy brethren, and all the father's household home unto thee. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head. 
and we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. Amen. Amen. Joshua chapter 2, verses 12 through 19. We would like to leave a message with you this morning. Stay in the house. Stay in the house. And just for a subtopic, stay under the blood. Stay under the blood. Stay in the house. Stay under the blood. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we come to bring your word to your people, we ask you right now to use us to your glory, that you may get all the honor, all the praise, which is due unto you. Lord, let Wayne decrease that you may increase. Help me right now to bring forth your word with clarity that your people may hear and understand. For Lord, we know that you are the author. You're the finisher of our faith. Help us to stay in the house. And help us to seek you while you may be found. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated at this time in Jesus' name. Stay in the house. Stay in the house. Stay in the house in Jesus' name. This was, this is, this is a message that when I got the call to bring a, a word of the Lord this morning in Jesus' name, um, and I thought about this. Just you know, some message stick with you for a while, and one of the messages stuck with us here at this local congregation for a long time is still in a whole lot of our spirits. If not in every one of our spirits, the message was, "It's in the house." It's in the house in Jesus' name. It's in the house that we all can relate to staying in the house in Jesus' name. And we know that everything God needs in Jesus' name. It don't mean that God can't go outside the house and bring in more people, but everything that we need is already in here. We often pray, Lord, send in this and send in that. But what we need, God, yeah, we need more. More would be better. The numbers would, could be better, but we know that everything that God needs, he said, until you use everything that you have right now, stay in the house. Stay in the house. Stay in the house. And as we looked at this, I remember speaking on this this uh, a while ago, when I believe when Elder Martin was up in Minnesota, I remember bringing this message in Jesus' name. But staying in the house. Stay in the house in Jesus' name. And we see here as we Look into the word of God. We can find a whole lot of things that we can do. Being with COVID-19, we now, we said, we stay in the house. We stay at our own house now, our own personal house. We don't, now we don't, too many don't assemble themselves together in large crowds unless they're doing what they want to do. Most of us don't join, don't go to a large crowd and do it. There are too many people there, especially the church. The first time they said, we're having a gathering at the church. Oh, that's be too many people. Y'all got too many people there, too many things going on. But then I can have a cookout at, at my house. I can have a dinner at a, at a rental building that I'm renting. And I can invite many people as I want to. Many as I want to. And lo and behold, you look up, here come Wayne coming to the cookout. Here come Wayne coming to the large gathering. That's what we do. But with but. But when it comes to doing things of God and Jesus, when it comes to associating yourself with God's people, we can find all the excuses in the world. And I'm not just talking about the ones from the outside. I'm talking about the ones that are on the inside already. Too many people. Y'all, we too much. We too close together. We too this. We too that. I just watched the NBA finals that last year this time won't nobody in the building. They had them all in a bubble. But you look up this year. Now they got people, 19,000 people in a building, and you look outside, they said it was the number of 65,000 people outside. Somebody said, where is the social distance at? Where is the social distance at? There's no social distance. They just doing what they enjoy. They doing what they like. They doing what gives them pleasure in Jesus' name. They doing that. They're staying in their house. They are staying in their house. The house that, they, that they're building, they're staying in the house. And I'm not trying to say nobody this or that or we're this and that. But I'm just saying stay in the house. Stay in the house. Stay in the house. Stay 
under the blood of Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. How do I stay in the house? I had to, had to look at this. Lord, how can I stay in the house? Do I just, just come to church every Sunday and say, okay, I'm in the house. Do I just listen to Bible class with them on, on the, uh, Wednesday night and join them on Sunday school on Thursday nights? How do I stay in the house? What do I have to do to stay in the house? Do I just... Just be a number in the building. Oh, Lord, what do I have to do to stay in the house? And I learned some learning day by day. I haven't learned everything that I need to know right now, but I'm learning day by day as time go along. God will give you the Bible says, hear little, dare little, line upon line, precept upon precept. Some mistakes been made, some bad choices been made, some turning down the wrong road, but at the same time, same time. God said, I need you to stay in the house. Stay in the house. You ever done anything out there, anybody in the congregation? You don't have to raise your hand to check one of the you that are watching on Facebook. You ever done anything to feel like it separated you from the love of God? Have you ever spoke the wrong way? Have you ever been in the wrong place and said, man, this man, God, no way God want me. No way God. I, I, he can't be still with me. He have to have left me. This, this stuff that I'm doing, I, and, and you know, as we now studying in the book of Genesis, and you read in the book of Genesis, when we was reading about all the things that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob done, all of the, the things that what we would call a mistake, things that we would say, well, how did God stay in the midst of that? If you read in the book of Genesis, I know it brought questions to my mind. Lord, how was you still able to stay right there in the midst of that? And I see the little stuff, I call it little to me, but it may be big to God. But the Bible says all sin is unrighteousness. All sin is unrighteousness. It don't, it don't please God. That's very true. But when you look at all the things that they done, and it make you wonder, Lord, how, 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 how is, we saying we in the, the, the period of grace right now, but God, grace been around since day one. God, grace, well, since when he came, and he said, let there be light. His grace covered the whole entire universe in Jesus' name. But as you look, you saw all the things that they done. You see what's going on and all the stuff. They said, Lord, how you stay there? But as you keep on reading, to somebody that's reading it and not really trying to get in this, you just reading through it. You say, well, I can go out and do anything. I actually can step outside the house a little bit and do a little something outside the house. But as you read on, you get the more and more you read. You see God's hands start to move. You see God's judgment start to get into place. You see God start to do some things that you say, oh, I see why now. Sooner or later, somebody had to say, Jacob said, Lord, 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 Lord. And you know what? The angel came and wrestled with him. And he said, oh, no, not today. You're not. You're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. I can imagine Jacob got to the point where he said, I'm tired of doing this right here. I'm tired of making these bad choices, these bad decisions. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. They wrestle all night long. But Jacob got his blessing. His name was changed from Jacob to Israel in Jesus' name. So we see God going to stay with you. If God called you and you know God called you, don't worry about your position right now. Don't worry about who calling me, who don't call me. What you need to do right now is stay right there in the house. Stay right there at the house. You covered under the blood. You covered already. Your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life, and God has a purpose for you. Because he didn't, God don't do stuff just off of a just, I think I just do something today. No, God don't work like that. He all he got authority, he got a purpose, he got a plan. He has a way, and that way is mighty, mighty, mighty sweet in Jesus' name. We don't understand it sometimes, for he said, my ways are not your ways. Neither my thoughts, your thoughts, but you best believe that if you stay in the house, God has a plan for you. God has a purpose for you in Jesus' name. Don't worry about, is it, I'll be the first or the last to call. Don't worry about all that stuff. You stay right there where you're at because God has something for you. If you, if, if, if you say, well, I'm not, I'm halfway in the house, not all the way. It don't matter. That's why I say stay under the blood. Stay under the blood. Stay right there with somebody that's in the house. Do you think we read these names on this prayer list just for just to set we are? Think we'll do a prayer list so everybody can know we praying? No, no, no. It's a reason why. It's a reason why some of these people said no. Call them. They're asking to put me on their prayer list. 
not that we're so mighty, we're so strong, but then my mind goes back to Israel. He said, I don't call to him. I didn't choose you because you were mighty and you were strong. But actually, I chose you because you were small. You were smaller than the rest of them. That's why I chose you. You might have, you know what I look at sometimes? Maybe, I, I, I mentioned before, maybe we might be just the, just the filling station. When you're going down the highway and you come up to a gas station in the middle of nowhere, and if your gas tank is on E, how many going to keep pads going by there? You're not going to, you're not, you know, I got to, it may look like it run down and broke down. Ain't many people go stop by there. But one thing I do know, I'm going to stop by there. It may be something in that house. Maybe something in that God has that purpose for each and every one of us that's in here, those that are watching us on Facebook, and not just for here. God, that's why the Bible says he's omnipresent. He, 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 he don't care. He, he, he would do what he do for one he would do for another. He has no respect to person. If we would avail ourselves and allow God to do some things, God would show us some miraculous things. He can show us how wonderful he is. He can show us how, how marvelous. He can show us how, how awesome he is in Jesus' name. For he's an awesome God. He is, he is past finding out. But one thing we do know, he told Moses, I may have known my ways unto you, but the rest of them, you can see my acts. You can see what I do. Marion and Aaron tried to try to revolt against Moses, but they said, Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't, don't try to, don't try to outshine somebody. Let God be your glory. Let God be your light. Let God be your leader. Let God be your guidance in Jesus' name. And watch what he do for you in the name of Jesus. But we see here in the text that I read in Jesus' name, we see here Joshua has taken over command. Moses has gone on. Joshua has taken over command. And they are about to go into what God has promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all of their descendants. God has put it into action in Jesus' name. And as they prepare to move forward, they come up to a place here by the name of Jericho. And, God, and J Joshua said, send out some men. Send out some men that we may spy. That we may spy. He sent out two men. And they went to spying. They spied and they looked to see what the land is, what the land looked like. Can we take it? Maybe we can't take it. I don't know. Let's just go and see. God told us it belongs to us. It's ours. We go get it. So they prepared. And as they move forward, they get into the land indeed. And it's the story, as I read it before and I read it again this morning a little bit, it is amazing to me how whenever it's, this is how wonderful God is. I want to say it in a way that it don't seem negative to some, but it is amazing how when men go out looking for something, it's amazing how they come up to a house with women in it. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it PG rated. It's amazing how we go out, we go to looking for something. It's amazing. I remember as a young man, man, when we, when me and my, some of my buddies, we used to go out of town, and we used to go to different places, and I remember going down to Atlanta, and we got down there, we're going to a baseball game, me and two of my other buddies went down, and the first place we said when we got down there, let's see, can we find us a, a place of the night? <laughs> let's see, can we find us a place of the night? Let's see if we find a place like that. Cause after we leave the baseball game, we got to have something to do. Let's see if we find us a place to go at night. <laughs> and for those that can get my grip a little bit, if you're in, I think most of the ones in the congregation, the whole Facebook, I hope you're kind of getting the message too. I'm trying to keep it a little, a little clean here in Jesus' name. But as these spies enter into Jericho, it's amazing how they came up on Rahab. They came up on Rahab house. I'm just showing you how far. You can't get too far from God. You can run all you want to. Oh, Santa, you can run, but you can't hide. When God got his eyes on you, he got his eyes on you. When God got his hands on you, he got his hands on you in Jesus' name. You know what? And it's so sweet. If we would just submit ourselves, we'll find out how sweet it really is. But a lot of times, we don't want to submit ourselves. Most of the time, I find myself bucking a little bit. Lord, why do you want me to do it? Lord, can't somebody else do it? 
Why don't you ask him? That she go, stay in the house, people of God. Stay in the house. Watch how God works for you. But they come up on Rahab's house. They come up on Rahab's house. And as Rahab is there, the people there, they know that the spies are there. As you read on into the chapter, early on into the chapter, the spies realize, I'm sorry, the people of the land realize that the spies had made it there because they went to Rahab's house. And those men that are in there, Bring them out. Bring them out. So you bring them out. Why they here? We know why they here. We, they already been said. It, we trying to figure out how God gonna work things out in our behalf. God is already making turns. He's already breaking down this this barrier and setting up another one. He already opened up the door that's closed. So when you get there, all you have to do is walk right in there. All you have to do, walk, you don't have to worry about knocking on the door and thinking, all you have to do is just walk right on in there. You said, well, you just going to just knock, going to knock. He said, knock in the shed. No, he's already got the door right there because no why? He is the door. He is the door. So you are with him already. All he tells you to do, you walk in there. You don't have to worry about knocking at the door. I am the door. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life in Jesus. I'm already all of that. You with me? You come on. When you with me, you don't have to come on, come on, come on, come on. Stay in the house, people of God. Stay in the house. Rahab had some things going on in her life. She was what we are called woman of the nights. The Bible called her a harlot in Jesus' name. She was a harlot. Rahab the harlot. As they got there, she took in these spies. These are people of God. These are people that God brought out of Egypt. These are the people that God promised something to them. These are They, they were people of God just like you feel strongly that you are a person of God. Say, like, how many feel like they're going to heaven this morning? <laughs> I truly feel like I, I, I believe, I know, I know without a shadow of a doubt, if I keep his spirit down on the inside of me and I don't walk away, I don't sell out, I don't do that. Now, notice I said if I don't make no mistake, but if I just hold to his unchanging hand, I am a person of God. I, I am one of God's chosen ones. Don't make me no better than nobody else is out there doing in and everything. But I just know he had called me out of darkness. Now I can see a little better now. Oh, I had my eyesight all along, but now I can see it a little different way. The, the, the Psalms have said, you know what? I was just going out doing everything. I looked around. The man doing it and everything, he's getting blessed. He's blessed. He's blessed. Everything he do, he's blessed. The woman that's making all the mistakes, she's blessed. She's blessed. She's blessed. But she said, he said, but one thing, I, when I found out that when I went into the house of the Lord, oh, I saw it was a bad end for them. If they don't change their ways, they don't come in the house like I did, it's a bad end for them. It ain't going to turn out good for them. And you know what? I don't, I don't, I don't like this, the, 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 the bring a message that would scare anybody. But you know what? The Bible said that we can have to snatch some out sometimes just so, we, just, just so they're saved. Sometimes you might just scare somebody. They have TV shows that scare it straight. If you're in prison, they do something to scare you, hope you get straight. Man, if they can do it on a TV show, too, they show if you want to go to heaven, something got to make you move. Or everything, nothing else ain't making you move. So maybe you got to be scared straight in Jesus' name. Maybe you got to get be scared to come into the house. Maybe you got to think your life is about to leave you, and then you come into the house of the Lord. But the main thing, come into the house, and when you come into the house, stay in the house, stay in the house, stay in the house, stay in the house. Rahab. Rahab was not in the house, people of God. She was not in the house. She was not one of God's chosen people or person. Neither was any of her family members. That's something to be said. Think about that as we continue on. Ponder that. Make yourself a note, mental note in your mind, Facebook and congregation make that neither was she nor any of her family put yourself in that place you nor any of your family was in that place but God saw something God saw some faith the Bible tells us that without faith it is impossible to please God one that come to God must believe that he is God 
and that he is a rewarder. You may, how can I, the only way you can get a reward is you got to do something. Anybody call you, tell you you won a lottery, you know you never played the lottery, there's no reward for you. If you ain't played the lottery, you can't win the lottery. I'm going to win the lottery. I never, I haven't went and bought a ticket to join the lottery, to even participate. Rahab was in a position. She was in a position that she had to make some choices. The spies are there. They ended up in her house. You ever say, why you stop by my house? Especially during COVID. I peep out the window. Renee, why they stop here? Lord, why they stop? Why they stop here? Why you need direction from me? Why you need me to give you direction? Keep on moving. Go to the next house. But these spies come in. These spies, they stopped, they stopped at her house. She did them a favor. She took them and she hid them. The men are called the town people are calling them out. Bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out. We know they stopped there. Matter of fact, we know they're there because they're men. And we know what you do there. Bring them out. Bring them out. Don't leave them there. Because we heard that they may be some of them Israelites. That we heard they may be some of them people of God. Because we know that they were coming. We didn't know when they were coming. If you read on, you see, we know they were coming. Know why we know they're coming? We heard about them. Hallelujah. People of God, local congregation, Facebook, people heard about you. People heard about you. They know about you. They know where you stand. They know where you sit. They know what you believe. They know what you teach. They know what you do. They studied you. That the Bible said you are written epistles before men. They know your lifestyle. They know all about you. Rahab sitting there, the people in the town, we know they're there. We know what you do. They stop by there. We let's maybe matter of fact, let us talk to you for a few minutes, Rahab. You might can convince them that let's let's uh let's 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 do a little bargain in here in Jesus' name. Let's do a little bargain. But Rahab saw something. Evidently she must have saw something in me. But the Bible say when she said, you know what? We heard that you all were coming. We heard you was coming. And we are in fear. We are in fear. We knew you was coming. We knew you was coming. But why you stop by here? We knew you was coming. But because we heard when, when you tried to cross the Red Sea, when you came out of Egypt, we heard that the Red Sea opened up for you, and you came across on dry land. And Egypt army, Pharaoh's army, that we know they were mighty. We know they were mighty. We know they had power. We know they had strength. We know they had the military might. We knew they had all of that. We knew they were strong. But it said the Red Sea opened up from you. Opened up and you came across on dry ground. And all the Pharaoh's men, they were trapped. They were drowned. The sea came back together again. So we know our fear is already on you. Already on you. But why are you here? I know you're here for a reason. I know you came to take over this land because God promised it to you. God had promised us a whole lot of things. Some of you, God had promised you some individual things. Some of God has spoke to each and every, anybody in here that has the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Christ down on the inside of you. God have whispered something in your ear. Even if if you don't have the Holy Ghost, I go a step farther. Even if you don't have the Holy Ghost in here or on Facebook Live, God has spoken something to you. He has said something. You may say, that won't God. That was the preacher. Ah, uh, you better believe that the preacher, if he's an upright man or woman, or he's a one with a pure heart with God, don't you know that we are the body of Christ? Don't you know we are God's hand, Jesus' hand? Don't you know we are his eyes, we are his ears, we are his arm? We are, we are what we're trying to do now, we're trying to work out our soul's salvation. We're trying to become love just like Christ. We're trying to be able to look past all of your obstacles. We're trying to look all the way past, Rahab, what you've been doing before we got here. But now we're here. Now we're in the house. Now it's time for you. you got to make a choice. Rahab had to make this decision. She said, you know what? 
I'm not just going to ask for me. Because each and every one of us in here at some time or another said, Lord, and we even sang this song. Lord, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. But Rahab said, you know what? I'm not going to just ask for me. But she said, Lord, Lord, will you do this for me? And verse 13, and will you save a lot? Notice she just said, save me first, Lord. She said, Lord, will you save my father? Will you save my mother? Lord, will you save my brethren? Lord, will you save my sister? This thing is for all of us. If you got the Holy Ghost, the promise is to you. It's to your children. It's to your children's children. It's, it, even as many as the Lord thou God shall call, stay in the house. Stay in the house. Stay in the house. Don't leave the house. Don't worry about all the things that they said you is or you're not or you're not going to be. Don't worry. Don't worry about all that stuff. Don't let that upset you. Don't let that get you all, all been out of shape. Stay in the house. Don't worry about job promotion. Don't worry about wealth. Don't worry about fame or fortune. Don't worry about the car you drive. Don't worry about the clothes that you got on. You stay right in the house. You stay, even though you might think, well, I'm too young to put all this, all my chips in that basket. I'm telling you right now, it's a good basket to put your chips in. It's a good basket to put your chips in. If you want to see a reward show enough, if you want to see some gain, it's a whole lot better than 401k if you put your trust in God. You wanted that. Tell me about Roth and IRA. Oh, you talking about the stock market is good? Oh, you talking about this right here? You put it over here. This thing is really booming. If you put your trust in God, God can, God can make a position happen that don't even exist. God can make something happen that nobody ever thought of before. At, at the job I work at, we were just talking about the other day. It's a it's a piece of styrofoam. Everybody know what styrofoam is? It's a piece of styrofoam that you put up under a tub that to make sure that it get the proper draining. A piece of styrofoam. When I'm talking about God can make something and He can make something that don't like it worth much. That piece piece of styrofoam that people just sometimes use for packing when they're shipping stuff to keep it from moving around. A piece of styrofoam. Do you know people? have to pay anywhere from $100 to $150 to put that piece up under their, their tub and their shower to keep it, make sure it drains properly. Cold requires, it has to be there. Don't you know God can fix it so it'll be a cold requirement that you have to buy from here. You know why I know he'll do that? And once again, as we study in the book of Genesis, it was a famine in the land. Guess where they had to go to? They had to go to Egypt. Egypt was the place to be at that time. God can fix it so you can't go nowhere else but right there. That's where your blessing is. That's, Paul saw ready to the same thing. He could have asked. He could have asked. He could have went anywhere else. But God, no, I need you to go to Ananias' house. I need you to go over there. I need you to go right there. Cause that's, only, that's your blessing right there. You can't go nowhere else but right there. Here this Facebook, God has a place for you to go. You better hope and pray that you will listen and hear the place that God is sending you to. These spies end up at Rahab's house. When they got to Rahab's house, Rahab prayed, save us, save us. Her, her mother, her father, her sister, her brother, she even went on to say, and deliver our lives from death. Deliver our lives from death because she knows. That when God come through there, when he send his people through there, if you ain't in the right place at the right time, you could be lost. It could cost you your life. It could cost you your life. As these spies got there and they got the message from Rahab, what she requested them, she made an agreement between them and her. And the spies come to agreement and say, we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll do just what you said. After she don't let them down, she don't sit the men out, the, 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 the pursuers out that was pursuing them. They going out on a 
wild goose chase, looking for something that they're not going to find because it's still right there in Jericho. They look for stuff they're not going to find, but she let them down. She let them down, and she realized then. Now, remember the agreement we made. I help you, you help me. I help you, you help me. Remember that agreement. They said, we're going to do just what you ask. She let them down, the Bible says, on a scarlet thread. When I say stay under the blood, that scarlet thread represents the blood of Jesus Christ. You may not be in the house right now. You may not be in the house. You may be right now surviving off somebody else's benefits in Jesus' name. You may be, when you're on an insurance policy, when I got my license, I got my license. Mom had to have me on some insurance, but after I got my license, she could easily drop me off. Now the policy said, no, you can't do that now. You got to keep them on that insurance until they get some insurance on their own. Nobody can run free now, supposedly, but you know, everything has a crack in the system. Everything has a hole in the system, but you're not supposed to legally be able to have your license without having some type of insurance. But sometimes we live off what somebody else, our protection is under somebody else covering in Jesus' name. Our life insurance policy we put on our children and our and different ones in our family, they under our policy to a certain time, and then they say, you know what? Now they are of an age that it may make wise sense to let them handle their own their own. Rahab got here, they made the agreement. When they made the agreement, she let them down on that scholar thread. And she said, they said to her, now, when you go out, you better let your family know that while they're here in this house, they better stay in this house. Because they don't stay in this house, what's going to happen to the people that when we come here, it ain't going to be on our hands. It ain't going to be on our hands. So we at the time in our lives that when we're going through some things, both young and old, mom and daddy pray, going to continue to pray. Auntie and uncle's going to pray. Grandma and granddaddy going to pray. The people of God going to continue to pray for you. But there's going to come a time in your life you're going to have to make a decision. I need to go into the house. I need to go into the house. Because your protection is in the house. Your covering, all that you need is going to be when you stay in the house. And while, you, while you're out there on the outside, your, the blood of Jesus Christ Wait, all the people of God that are praying for you, these names are on the prayer list. Some of these we know, some of these I don't know. But you know what? Because of the blood of Jesus Christ, he's not willing that any should perish. But it all should come to repentance. If Rahab made the choice and she gave them some request that she needed done, they agreed to it and they told her these are the obligations to the request that you make. And when it was all said and done, remember Rahab's occupation now. Remember her occupation. Can you imagine having to go to your sister and brother, your mother and your father, after you don't made them probably ashamed? After you don't made them the talk of the town? After you don't made them the least family in the whole town of Jericho? You got to go to them and say, can y'all come to my house? Why? Remember I said earlier, why they stop by my house? Why we got to go to your house? Why we got to go to your house? Some of the house that we go to for our family together, we said, no, we can't go to that house because you can't do this at that house. I can't bring this at that house. Let's go to that house. Can you imagine her having to tell her mother, her father, her sister, and her brother, and all the kinsmen that would listen to her, come to my house. Come to my house. Knowing her occupation, come to my house. They had to do, that had to be some faith for them to believe we go to her house. They made the promise to Rahab. They made the promise to her. The family probably didn't hear that, that promise. They heard about the fear that was already in the land about the people of God coming through. But Rahab had to convince them, 
come to the house. Come to the house, come to the house. That's where your life, that's where your preservance, that's where you're going to live at. Come to the house. People of God, we got to somehow or another persuade men. Come to the house. Come to the house. While we in the house, don't forget about the ones in the house. We may sometimes we had to take our brother and our sister, and we may have to go up under them. We might have been down to help hold them up. Stay in this house. Stay in this house. Stay in this, what house you stand in? It don't have to be at this local congregation right here, but I need you to stay in the house of God. I need you to stay under the blood. Stay under the blood. Stay under the blood. Because when you stay under the blood, God going to protect you. God going to keep you. Stay in close connection with the people of God. Rahab hung down the scarlet. Symbolize the blood of Jesus Christ. As they came into the city, and sure enough, they took over the city. They took over the city, and everybody that was outside that house got what was predicted on them. And bring it in to my closing, as Rahab went on with her life, things happened. She prayed unto God. I'm sorry, she, she made an agreement with the, with, with the spies, and they agreed with the agreement. They made it through. Her family, all of them that was in that house made it through. Look where Rahab ended up at. Well, you think you're the last on the list? When you think you're the last on the list, nobody remember me. Nobody called my name. Been working for the Lord for a long time. Nobody recognized me. Look at what Rahab did. Remember her occupation. If you look over in the book of Hebrews, if you look over in the book of Hebrews, Rahab had her name put somewhere. Rahab had her name put in a place. Rahab was one time outside of the house. Rahab, not only did she get inside of the house, but it says in Hebrews chapter 11, 30 and 31, by faith, the wall of fell down after they were compared about seven days. By faith, the hall of Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. People of God, if you keep your hands in the almighty hands, you stay right under the blood where the world can't do you no harm. Now, it's going to be a lot of dust flying. It's going to be a whole lot of talking going on. It's going to be a whole lot of warring going on, battles. It's going to be a whole lot of persecution. It's going to be a whole lot of times when you think you're lonely. But one thing about it, he said, I'll be with you always, even until the end. Stay in the house. Stay in the house. Those that are not in the house, stay under the blood. Stay under the blood. How do I stay under the blood if I'm not in the house? Find some of God's people. Get a connection with them. Get their telephone number, their cell phone number. Get their address. Every once in a while, go by there and just say, I just came to see. I haven't heard from you in a while. Every once in a while, get their address. And write them a letter or something. Say, look, I, I, I haven't been to church in a while, but I had you on my mind. I thought I'd just write you a letter just to say, how I miss you or I hope you're still praying for me. Stay under the blood. Stay under the blood. But most important, stay in the house. With all that we have coming and going in this world, with all our names being written over here and written over there, Make sure you keep your name written in the Lamb's book of life in Jesus' name. We thank God this morning for the word of God that has came for us. Stay in the house. Stay under the blood in Jesus' name. We thank God this morning. We pray that you have gotten something out of our message this morning in the name of Jesus. And we hope that you would make it your purpose. Make it your plan 
make it your heart's desire to make sure that I do all that I can do. Because God is faithful. If we do all that we can do, if we keep our hands to the plow, don't look back, watch what God do for you. Watch how God open up doors. Watch how God make ways that seems impossible. Watch how God move in your behalf. Watch how he put you right in the line with the people of God that you too may go back with them when they come in Jesus' name. We thank God and we ask anybody here that desires prayer.